to my talk, our uh, p-test story. Subtitle is testing is hard and complex, they say. Yeah, you will see after this talk if this is true. My Tom, name is uh, Thomas Roos. I'm working with AWS doing um, that um, IoT Linux software there integrated in Meta, um, Meta AWS. So I'm responsible with my team for doing that. And yeah, let's get started. So what is our goal? Um, I did say that in um, November, um, we try to automate uh, the Yocto, Yocto layer maintenance of Meta AWS with uh, cloud managed services. And um, with this talk, this is a follow up on this topic, um, what we are doing with the p-test. So in this talk, uh, I have the link in, in the in the slides which I will upload so you can see what, what this is uh, all about, the bigger picture. And um, yeah, what we want to do is we want to test if we do a version upgrade of a recipe in that uh, Meta AWS layer. We want to verify that it's still okay, that it builds and it do something useful. It do does not explode, it does what it's supposed to do and yeah. So, as said in that other talk, yeah, we have 48 recipes. We have support for current releases of Yocto. We have three processor architectures to test. That means 12 builds and also 12 tests for each version upgrade of a recipe. Manual tests are not good, as we all know. And if you do that manually, it's just a lot of time you spend every day. So p-test, what is that? I guess you all know about this topic, p-tests, but yeah, it's a reminder for everybody that it's there. So um, what is it? Uh, it's something that's um, made for package tested uh, tests. It's uh, well integrated in Yocto OA, OA core. I don't know what's, what's the right wording there. And uh, it's supposed to run tests that come with a package so not something around like a test setup, some big um, environment setup stuff. It just ships with the package and it should be contained in that recipe or in the folder. It can be unit, integration, any tests. More thoughts on this later in a further slide. Yeah, and... Um, what is p-test about? It's have a common representation of, of tests. So imagine every, every package is using a different um, test framework, uh, has a different representation of that, it has different error strings, okay strings, and stuff like this. But p-test is like to have a common um, representation of that and uh, yeah. That um, p-test, um, uh, if you inherit that class, it will generate a package uh, dash, uh, minus p-test package. So you will generate always a p-test package if, if this is uh, active, this uh, class. Let's see an example on this. So... Um, this is important here. This is what we are using to have that in that Docker environment we are using. But um, here it's important um, that you have um, a p-test runner installed on, uh, on your test image. And uh, we always install the SSH test and that PUT, it's that package on the test. It's that specific package we want to test, which is just upgraded, which we want to integrate and see if there's a, if that new version works. So what you need to do is to um, that image classes, uh, you add that test image, as Alexandro said this morning as well, it's the same thing. And test suites, you add p-test here. That's in your local conf. How does a bitbake recipe look like if it's 
comes with p-test, so it needs to inherit that class p-test. You need to add some run p-test file. Um, you add it to that uh, source URI, and it's the starting point of your test, what will be executed if you run that p-test. It's a, it can be, it's, it's a simple bash script, for example. I will show you in the next slide. Um, Pokey, that reference distro, already has a distro feature p-test enabled by default. And what we do in our packages, what I kind of like, is just to um, build um, that testing. Uh, and the, it depends again on what you're building and what you're testing, but you can do something like this, it says if p-test is enabled, there is a package config and then it will enable that package config and it will build with testing on, otherwise not. So if you don't enable that, it will not build with that parameters. R depends on your p-test can be if if if, it, um, if that p test a uh, run p test script uh, for instance need bash uh, you need to have a run dependency on that you can add it here or whatever you need for running any kind of your tests this is uh, about how to install your test it's um, first uh, generate that um, test folder. There is, uh, if you inherit that class, you have that variables for that p-test uh, pass. And the next step is here, for instance, that's not, not a complete sample. I just copied what's in various re recipes to show you the syntax. And the next here is, um, for instance, we have like, um, it's uh, C, C, the unit test, I think, they are just build it with that mechanism sh showing up here. And it's, um, it's a binary, so that binary ne needs to be executable and it will be copied to that um, tests directory for that p-test package. How is that compiled? Yeah, as I just said, uh, yeah, if it needs to be compiled, if it's just a bash script, it doesn't need compilation. And um, Should I make a short break to, for everybody to grab something? No, I think we're good, thanks. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's continue with the next slide. So that's the simple p-test uh, bash script, for instance. It uh, does not require bash, it's just sh. So what does it do? It goes into that directory, it lock, uh, removes that previous log file if you run it maybe for debugging multiple times. Then there is, as we do it in many recipes, there's a list of known good test cases and then there is a loop and it loops through all that known good test cases and appends that to the tests uh, dot log. And after this, there's that common representation thing. So in that, um, in that specific um, tests, there is, um, it's, it's replaced uh, that okay, which our test suite here says okay, but we need pass, fail, or fail in that test log so that SED tool converts that log file to have a common representation that it's counted correctly. It's important. It's important to have that um, colon and it's important to have a space.
Okay, to run that test, you need a test image. So what we do is uh, that um, package under test variable, it gets first enabled in that pass-through additions, and then it just says that package name um, should be installed in that core image minimal. So that's, that, uh, that's all about here. It's gonna, um, it's, so this is one command and it will build at the core image minimal with that package on the test, ptest package in it. So how to do, debug this? So if you're developing tests to find that list of um, known good tests which should be executed, um, what we do is we run QEMU, um, yeah. And once you're in that, um, in that uh, QEMU, you can um, start that p-test runner, which is like the, co uh, the controller of all p-tests in that image. And um, for our case, it's, uh, it's that uh, one p-test there for that package upgrades. We just have one p-test in that test image. If you want to have a list of all p-tests, then it's, it will run all. So um, this is the place where you find that p-tests and your script. So once you run this, it will run that um, run p-test script, which is installed here as well. And then it will run that tests. As I uh, showed you there, it will um, execute that uh, bash, uh, that <laughs> bash um, script, and then it will uh, change the log files to that p-test um, syntax. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you, that previous slide was for debugging, for developing the tests to figure out which, which are known good or bad or which one you want to run or how to run. But uh, what we're doing is usually we, um, this all is integrated in like, uh, yeah, in, in, in GitHub action that runs on every update and, and so on. So it basically runs that big uh, bitbake core image minimal minus c test image. So it runs that test uh, that whole test image with um, all that uh, um, contained p tests in that image. And what you will see after running this, there will be a test results JSON in that build temp log oeqa folder. And what we do after this is we, we pass that uh, test results and say, uh, check if there are tests that failed and if it's good or if it's bad. That's, that's uh, one step up around this whole test, p-test thing, what we use. So and if there is a failure, we don't integrate automatically that. Okay, that's where we just stopped. So if you um, have that um, test image, this is how you run that test. It will generate that test results JSON. You need to pass it, ch uh, check if there are test failures on the p-test package. And what it looks like if you use that result tool, it can also pass that JSON and give an, a text output. And it shows, yeah, that p-test here for that AWS CRT Python, for instance, it passed 15 tests, it failed one test, and it took that time. That's all in that JSON result, and yeah, as I said, we passed this with a different tool, but for developing the test, this is a good way to check if that um, p-test is counted correctly. As I said, if you forget the colon and the space, it won't show up correctly here, it will just run, but not be counted. Next slide is, uh, if you have more tests in your, in your image, um, then it, they all will run. And again, you can debug them with that tool, or you can abstract them, or you can save that report for, 
for whatever or compare it if there is a re regression, something like this. Yeah, I said problems. Uh, it's not all problems, it's just some problems we figured while developing those tests. So there is no warning if you miss that run p test, uh, if it's not in, in, that, um, in that source URI, there is no warning. If you, if you use it, yeah, that's one mistake you can make. I said space colon necessary, that's how it should look to be correct counted. Okay, there are other restrictions. There's a RAM limit, the default, if you run that core image many more without setting any extra um, QEMU memory, it's 265 megabytes. Some test suites require more, so be aware of that. There is also a time limit of that p-test runner. I know there are short-running or long-running tests in, in that um, in uh, Yocto, in, but I'm not sure what's the difference. Maybe somebody knows and can tell me. Ross? The long tests can take hours. Okay. So it's, it's uh, so the auto builder can run the short ones often, and the long ones, I don't know. Okay. So, yeah. And if you, if you need a name server, you need to configure that in your test as well, but it's not really a p-test problem. It's just something we recognized when we did write the tests. Yeah, so what's the strategy for writing p-tests to get started with p-tests? Yes, yeah, start with simple tests. A, a test can be, if that binary is executable, if it shows help, if it shows a version, if it gives a correct uh, return code, if, yeah, if that's, that's simple tests and any test is better than no tests, of course. Yeah, if the software you are testing has tests included, yeah, it's a strategy to use them, unit tests, integration tests, samples, building samples with libraries, for instance run the samples, if they build and run, your library is tested as well. As I said, do you need internet DNS for integration tests maybe? As you know, AWS web services, we need some internet for some tests. Yeah, do you need extra space for running those tests? I don't know if there is a, co a correct way for p-tests to get more space for just that test. I mean, you can always have that root FS extra space, but it might be a bad approach to have a global extra space. But just for that specific test, if you need more space, I don't know, I came up with some approach having like in that uh, p-test install phase generating some, some um, zero binary with uh, some space and then delete it when running the test so it will automatically get, generate a queue image, emo, uh, image which is bigger but it might not the right approach, might, that, might there something out there, might Somebody know? Do somebody know? Uh, we don't know how big the p-test is that we have, right? That's, 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 that's the point. So that's some area of improvement. Yeah. Yeah, so again, uh, understand what the recipe is used for. So if it's a library, Compiling samples is a good approach. If it's a runtime, running something with that runtime is might a good approach. So we have a Java runtime in Meta AWS. So how we test that is yeah, to run some Java thing in that, for instance. Yeah, and then there is a, yeah, a problem, which I'm not sure how to deal with that. If you're depending on higher level packages, for instance, you're upgrading a library, it will run 
only the tests of the library. But if you have a other program running uh, samples, for instance, building with that library and it's a separate recipe, they are not run when you upgrade that library. But of course, it should work as well. So that connection between two packages, what we did for some recipes is to add the dependency manually to that to that uh, program, so or run that same test in the library, and add a dependency to the program as well in that uh, library p test to test the only the library. So, but it's manual work. So, I I'm not sure. Might somebody has a better idea? That's why I'm giving that talk. So it's some kind of discussion possibilities. More. More problems. How to test uh, package options, all package options, for instance, or just some, and a uh, combination of all. I don't know. Uh, it's. Uh, I mean, what we try to do is to enable, enable all and test them the package, but might only a combination works. That's some. I don't know a good solution for that. Yeah, as I said, if you need internet and some integration tests for web services and etc., you need keys and something more for your tests. So <laughs> that's yeah. That as I said, p tests are more for like everything is contained in that recipe in that folder. So you want do not want to have like keys there for your tests if you need them. I don't know a good solution yet, but it's something to work on. Yeah, and as I said, it counts warnings, errors, but um, yeah, if, if your tests, if your good tests generates a warning or error, it will also count it or convert it. It depends on your regex as an error. So be aware of that. Yeah, some links. First pointer is to the wiki. Second pointer is to my talk to understand the bigger picture of what we are doing. What's that p-test used for currently? And yeah, that's all. It's time for questions. So. Can you explain the package option problem a little bit more clearly? Because I think that the most people, they're, well, I can't speak for most people, but many people, they're um, creating their own distributions to put on products, right? So they have one option. But when you're an application layer. First round of stuff from GSpot, I have no idea what it is. I'll be done for my question. <laughs> yeah, Richard. Yeah. So, but when you're in application layer, you want to test like all the combination of different options, right? So I think that's the real problem. We couldn't really come up with anything really solid on that, right, Thomas? So can you d give me an example? Like, for example, in the IoT device client, maybe you can explain the problem a little bit more. Um, like the different functionality switches and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, in that case, it, there is uh, that IoT device client um, can be built with several modules built in or compiled in or compiled out. So, might there is a cross dependency on that modules, which can be tested if we just enable all. If we disable all, none of them is p tested if we, we don't test a combination on that. So that's understandable, the problem. So I think the, the, the thing that we would like to avoid is creating a test image for every single combination, right? So if anyone has any ideas on that or has come across that problem before, it would be interesting to know about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are there more questions? This is more of a comment, but I went through the exercise of taking the extensive QA tests for GNU Radio 
and they were designed to be run in tree in the build tree and I had to go through some hoops to uh, change some paths from the build system path to the target path and move them to a suitable place and package them. Um, so if anyone is curious what it looks like taking a QA test out of CMake and moving them in, uh, just ask me and I can point you at the recipe that has it in it. Um, do we have thought about measuring coverage during p-testing? So that would be interesting to see how much of a package is actually covered by uh, different combinations of options. No, I don't have numbers on that. There are some out there in our meta AWS layer, but our approach so far, or my approach is to enable all options and to test everything, but maybe there are combinations that don't work cross dependencies on P tests. Yeah, it just depends on the kind of software where you are building. So it's, it can be, yeah. Yeah, what I may want to say is that it, it's up to the software you're building. It's, it can be tested in various reasons. So, so it's, yeah. Just think about what your software did, does and how to test that properly. Yeah. And I've been mulling over re well, not rewriting how p-test works. And so the output format is quite annoying. Huh? Um, like the the p-test output format. Yeah. How you have to do pass colon space because it's the uh, auto tools format. Yeah. Um, replacing it with something a bit more structured uh, is on my very long to-do list, uh, like probably something based on TAP, but that does make me think maybe, yeah, maybe we should include coverage reports in it, because if you have a test framework which can do uh, coverage analysis, then yeah. that could be generated as well. I, I know we have packages that have that com CMake option to generate yeah. that output. That would be, yeah. That'd be really useful. Some further work to do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> another thing on the list, right? Yeah, yeah, another cool thing, yeah. <laughs> You're never coming back to fall so long as that. <laughs> yeah, at one, at one point we were doing some coverage stuff in AGL and, and a lot of the coverage stuff is not really super friendly for doing on target easily. Uh, at, least, at least the stuff I looked at, maybe things have improved in the last couple of years, but the, the, the uh, it might be fixable, but but doing some hacking now around some of the new, like the uh, the new debug format stuff, where you can get at it with HTTP or whatever. But that was a big aspect. That is a lot of the coverage tools want the debug information on target, and some of the extra coverage files have to actually like hook up correctly. There's stuff that still has host build paths and stuff. It's yeah. messy. Yeah, it's, so there might be fixes for that, but it's not just working. Yeah. So are there more questions? 